So X slash Twitter decided to take away one of my most beloved features, the public likes tab on profiles. And while Elon has hinted that they might bring it back in some capacity because of all the backlash, they might not. A few weeks out and other employees are still rubbing it in. But either way, we're going to go over the impact of this decision as well as document what we can learn from the feature for the long run. And to anyone who's like, she just posted a 40 minute video about the Twitter likes tab. Yes, I did. It deserves that especially if it ends up gone forever because it's been historic and should be documented as so. Let's go over the basics. The public likes tab on profiles has been somewhat unique to Twitter and has been around since its early days. Likes have always been default public on the platform with no option for otherwise. On TikTok, people's likes tab is default private, but with the option for otherwise. And someone like Taylor Swift has decided to make hers public to add another social layer for fans checking her account. On Instagram, while there's never been the ability to make your likes public in their entirety through a feed view on your profile, they used to have a following feed with an activity where you could chronologically see what your following list was engaging with on the platform. Instagram got rid of this in 2019 due to users' lack of awareness that their activity was being shown there, along with other privacy concerns. People's relationship with Instagram's following feed was quite different, as you couldn't filter down to individual accounts, and you have to be very attentive to it because of how much data was piling in the more people people you followed. But back to Twitter, the absence of the public likes tab on profiles causes a shift in how users compartmentalize their identity, how they curate, how they come across new accounts and thoughts and media void of the algorithm, how they vet someone and assess their being, how they subtly communicate with others. The list goes on. Can we survive without it? Yes. The conversation about it being taken away has already died down greatly because unlike me who won't let the x slash Twitter team live it down, other people tap out quickly and move on to the next big cultural moment. But still, does its absence diminish the value and compellingness of Twitter? Also yes. If you're an active user who didn't check other people's likes, sorry to say it, but you missed out on a valuable experience. So what happened? Hiding the public likes tab became an option for premium users like myself back in September of 2023. But many, if not the vast majority of premium users decided to keep theirs public. The announcement back then was, keep spicy likes private by hiding your likes tab. The description states, your likes tab on your profile will only be visible to you. Your likes timeline will also be hidden from the X APIs, meaning third parties won't be able to retrieve the info, but not that the info won't be utilized in the recommendation algorithm. Your individual likes will still be visible on posts. Bringing in the option to hide likes is totally fine. Like, that degree of choice is good. Though I did say that because I scroll through people's likes just as much as I do their feeds, people who hide their likes are cowards. That's my opinion. But again, I'm still a huge supporter of choice when it comes to our social media experience. For example, in 2022, I tweeted Elon saying, please allow us to turn off public metrics if we want. Our social media experience should have more choice. I turned off like counts and comments on Instagram over a year ago and never looked back. We should be able to cater our experience to our liking. I tend to dislike designs focused on quantity slash metrics, and I tend to enjoy designs that allow for a better personal assessment of quality. And the two often aren't aligned on social media because of these platforms incentives. Other users see it differently or have different preferences and that's cool. They should be able to customize accordingly. But Elon decided to go an entirely different route. The X engineering account announced, this week we're making likes private for everyone to better protect your privacy. You will still be able to see posts you have liked, but others cannot. Like count and other metrics for your own post will still show up under notifications. You will no longer see who liked someone else's post. A post author can see who liked its post. So to reiterate, not only is the public likes tab on profiles gone, but you can no longer tap on a post likes and see who liked it aside from your own. You can't even see who liked the replies on your post. When it comes to other platforms, Instagram makes this information public, but TikTok does not. On Twitter, a lot of people are worried that this will allow bot engagement to have more free reign, but We'll leave that conversation somewhat separate and for another time. Elon followed up with, important to allow people to like posts without getting attacked for doing so. And I have to note that if that is where your mind immediately goes when you think of the Twitter likes tab, your mind is warped and you need to get out of a purely culture war or maybe temptation mindset. Not that those two are always comparable, but Every feature has positives and negatives, and just because people have gotten attacked for their likes before, it's still such a small percentage of the experience it offers, which we'll get into later. But just because people get attacked for their tweets, should we make those inaccessible? You know, completely get rid of the whole platform, the entire internet, life itself, 
Anything that opens you up to the possibility of criticism? This huge decision, again, despite private likes being something we're accustomed to online, this is a huge decision for Twitter because it was a unique and core experience on the platform from the start. This huge decision also goes against something Elon announced back in 2022 when he received backlash for another fundamental change he made to the platform. Going forward, there will be a vote for major policy changes. My apologies, won't happen again. This was said after Twitter announced in a now-deleted tweet that it would no longer allow free promotion to competitor platforms, meaning sharing direct links in bios or tweets, using link aggregators, aka link in bio platforms, and so on. This was absurd, considering so much of Twitter's value proposition is information curation. Also, he was trying to recruit big creators to post more on Twitter at this time, and penalizing the use of link in bio platforms showed he had no understanding of how important diversification is to their livelihoods. Journalists rightfully freaked out about this change. Former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey questioned why on the Twitter official account's now deleted thread, and the decision was reversed within less than 24 hours. Elon even tweeted, should I step down as head of Twitter, I will abide by the results of this poll. Over 57% of the more than 17 million people who voted said yes. Unfortunately, the new CEO who was hired in May of 2023 seems to be a puppet who doesn't get this stuff either. Aside from the verification fiasco that happened when Elon first took charge at Twitter, the removal of the public likes tab on profiles seemed to have the most mainstream backlash of any of his changes so far. So today, we're going to discuss why that is. Before we get into things, I'm excited to be partnering with Handshake on today's video. Handshake is a top early career network, and they've recently launched five new updates to make your experience even better. First is a new home feed to provide career inspiration through posts, videos, and articles. When I was applying to my first internships and jobs, I was solely looking at the title and description. There was nothing to more visually immerse me in what that experience could be like. So something like this is definitely a start to solving that. Two is smarter job recs with personalized recommendations catered to what's best for you. So much of our entertainment consumption is personalized at this point because it's meant to make the experience more enjoyable. So this is sure to make your job search less of a lift because there won't be as much digging. Three, more events, career center resources, and programming. I've actually hosted multiple events with Handshake in the past and throughout them, I always got jealous because I wasn't aware of such virtual events throughout college and they're super helpful. Four is updated means of messaging to connect one-on-one -on -one with recruiters as well as other young professionals. Your network can seriously make all the difference. And even if there aren't immediate payoffs, if you show people your respect and skills, they're gonna keep that in the back of their minds down the line. Lastly, five, navigation tools that will introduce you to resources and opportunities quicker. Similar to personalized recommendations, Handshake just wants to make your life and job search easier. So download and explore the Handshake app today to get started. Now let's get into the video. All right, let's cover what the public likes tab on profiles has done for Twitter. As mentioned, the tab has pretty much been there from the start, even when likes were called favorites between 2006 and 2015, represented by a star instead of a heart. The only other platform during my time online that I remember also having public likes was YouTube, as everyone's likes were shown within a default public playlist, but this changed in 2019. Otherwise, MySpace didn't even have likes during its peak because Facebook was the platform where the like button originated in 2009. And because Facebook and Instagram were the first social media platforms to have the like button and grow in the way they did, they set a precedent for a relationship with it. This, again, was that you could click on the number of likes to see who liked a post, but there was no way to access the entirety of someone's likes. So personally, I oppose this type of response to Twitter's recent decision, which states, if we're being honest, seeing likes should have never been a thing. No other social media app allows you to see a person's collective likes. And I oppose it because I think it's kind of a programmed thought, which we'll revisit later. But as Facebook and other platforms started to introduce various options outside of comments, such as like, share, free tweet, and so on, the term engagement entered the social media conversation. How our relationship with likes shaped up was more to provide acknowledgement to the poster or even just yourself than it was to create a broader social experience. Engaging via like instead became a very light, casual, and sometimes somewhat mindless experience, similar to how simply viewing a piece of content or web pages. Now for Twitter, this relationship was shaped differently, and we'll get there, but 
I would argue in a good way. And in a way I'm glad they stuck with up until Elon's recent decision because it boldly went against the norm, became a valuable case study, and it's something Instagram, TikTok, and so on could never pivot to because they create a relationship with likes that could cause a lot of trouble if they suddenly became default public unless they warned users beforehand and were like, likes from this point on will now be public. Supposedly the initial evolution from favorites to likes on Twitter caused similar outrage. Well, by the time I made an account in middle school, they were still called favorites. Facebook and Instagram already had likes at that point. So when I got onto Twitter, I just assumed that favorites were Twitter's version and acted accordingly. But for those who had a relationship with the favor button beforehand, they supposedly used them more like bookmarks to mark things that you may want to come back to later. Even though they were already public, when Twitter changed the button's name from favorite to like, the icon from a star to a heart, some users ran into trouble with certain tweets now being deemed likes because that was not their initial intent. Still, the switch happened early enough in our relationship with social media that the public likes tab on profiles could now take on a valuable role. Twitter's aim for the tab was to make the like feature more social compared to other platforms. For example, be somewhere people could discover and engage with new accounts. But let's hear from actual users, all the ways they've used the public likes tab over the years. I'm gonna be reading a lot of tweets over the next five minutes, but they're all interesting. So sit back and relax. If you're really getting that antsy, you can use chapters in the description, but again, all interesting. I didn't look at people's likes in an I'm crazy stalking you way. I did it in a you have really good taste and I wanna see what perfect tweets you're liking so I can like them too way. I'd be in everybody's likes. That's where the real comedy is. I also have a lot of friends that go days and even weeks without tweeting, but like plenty of shit. So that's how I feel like I follow them. Hiding likes is a weird move to be honest. I've been on this website since 2012 and being able to lurk on people's pages and see what they are actively liking is additional data that helps you get the gist of who the person is. A sort of mimetic subconscious. Likes told me all about the hidden parts of your soul and now they are gone. Likes told you more about someone than any tweet ever could. It's such a loss to the lurker creep in your inner communities. This is so dumb. I like to stalk people's likes so I can tell if you're an idiot or not before I follow you. I miss stalking people's likes to find out if they're cool or not. It was great to see what kind of stuff they like interacting with, what they find funny, or even what kind of moral compass they had. To me, it was everything. There are many abstract ways humans find meaning. Twitter has been a magical vector for serendipitous interactions in a contained environment, leading to many IRL moments of connection. I've met tons of great people through the likes function because I pay attention. Treated my likes as its own curated feed and others did the same. They add the screenshot that says, likes are a sacred currency in the Twitter world. Likes are even better than an algorithm as they are curated by someone you find interesting or thought provoking. One of my favorite ways to use Twitter was to go through likes every so often on a few accounts. I'll be using the site less now. There can be real value in scrolling through someone's Twitter likes, like a curated view of what ideas they found most interesting. That can't really exist elsewhere. I think what's important to quickly add here is that on Twitter, you have the highest potential to get the richest content from the widest range of people. It's a known thing that world leaders, business leaders, intellectuals, a lot of them are thriving on Twitter. There are extremely low barriers to entry, just text it's way quicker. You don't have to spruce yourself up, all these different barriers that are within video and the production quality and so on. So while there's potential for a lot of junk on there as well, you have potential for the richest content and that's extremely valuable and filters into why likes can be even more valuable. I have like four to six relatively random people whose likes I check every day because it's like a curated Twitter feed of pre-vetted quality content. The internet through somebody else's eyes, what a relief, what a window. I always use public likes as a discovery feature. I'd find someone cool, check out their likes, find someone cooler, check out their likes on and on recursively. There's some hidden gems out there you could only find this way. This makes discovering new artists harder. I used to search every new artist I found's likes and find like 10 more amazing ones. Definitely a shit update. Making likes private kills me because so many Japanese artists like instead of retweet to keep their timelines clean. And it's how I found a ton of new artists and now that's gone. Twitter has always felt like the least private of the social media platforms. Being able to see someone's posts, replies and likes all in one place has always made Twitter feel like an open book to someone's social media life in a way you don't get with other platforms. Sometimes likes are the only way I know someone's still alive. Actually, one of the greatest uses for Twitter likes was that if you came across a tweet that you suspected was bait or a reference to something you weren't clued in on, its author would usually reveal as much through their likes. I'll be honest, I stalked everyone's likes. Didn't realize how often I looked at people's likes on Twitter. Missing the feature a lot was a cool way to know what someone's mental diet online was. 
With all that being said, instead of those whose reaction to learning people check out others' likes being there should have never been a public likes tab, no other platform does it, going through people's likes is toxic and for the mentally unstable, the public likes tab fuels cancel culture, the correct outlook in response to now hearing all of those people's insights is this has literally never occurred to me and now I'm mourning what might have been. So why did Elon and team make this decision? Again, we saw the ex-official accounts revealed it's about privacy. Further on that point, we saw Elon revealed it's about being able to like things without getting attacked. And then some other employees revealed it's about more engagement. Fun fact, we did some analysis on premium users who had the hide likes feature enabled versus the ones who didn't, and the ones who did liked significantly more posts. Regarding the main announcement and Elon's comment, again, it's good to give people a choice if they want another layer of privacy, but that's not what they did. They took away a literal pillar of the Twitter experience in its entirety and announced it as if it was just one of their weekly tweaks to the platform. Now let's react to the point that people liking significantly more posts is solely a good thing. On TikTok, likes are basically completely hidden. Unlike Instagram, on TikTok you cannot click the number of likes on someone else's post and see who's in there. And again, the likes tab on profiles is default private. Because of this, it's a running joke amongst users that you like far more content on TikTok than any other platform. Like the slightest itch of the brain and congrats, you got my like. And while that's not inherently negative, because I could go through my likes on that platform and see that the vast majority don't deviate from how I act or what I share I'm interested in publicly, as mentioned earlier, they still definitely sway more mindless and junk food-like. And what you engage with feeds the algorithm, which then creates your media consumption slash diet, which then heavily plays into your mindset, and ultimately is where much of your life's most precious assets, aka time and attention, belong to. And when you put it like that, I don't want that experience to be mindless. And I think the likes tab being public on Twitter helped filter that. Even Instagram being about a third of the way between TikTok's approach to likes and Twitter's original approach to likes helps filter that a little bit. But Twitter decided to go with both privating the likes tab on people's profiles and not being able to see who likes someone else's post completely goes against Elon's aim of optimizing unregretted user minutes, which he says is the metric that matters most. Yes, people are now liking more things, but as the saying goes, quality over quantity. It's good to push for things to have a bigger purpose other than this just itched my brain, satisfied a temptation or desire, aligned with the type of negativity I tend to give into, or whatever lowball engagement there might be. And again, another argument that comes up is won't your likes at least be more authentic if people can't access them, which then makes your algorithmic feed experience better. And I think this video from Colin Quinn relates to that. What he mentions, your authentic self, not your best self, by the way. <laughs> We keep trying to achieve something that's not even the best you. The best you is fake you. Ask whoever loves you the most, your spouse, whoever, when you go home, say, would you rather I start relating to you in that fake, superficial way that I do with people at work or at the conference, like over the top, friendly, helpful, always in a good mood, dressed up nice, or my authentic self that you see, mildly depressed, Emotionally unavailable, <laughs> passive aggressive, usually in some sort of sweatpant. So good. Though, I'd say our best selves are probably somewhere in between because people often become robotic or devoid of valuable parts of their personality when it comes to work and or being too public facing. I felt like the public likes tab not being the default feed, but being one that you take an extra step to gain access to hit that sweet spot. But yeah, just because private likes might be more authentic, especially for those who had a mental block when they were public, doesn't mean they now portray someone's best self. And actually, that type of engagement might lead people astray from their best selves. But let's get a read on other people's reaction to the decision. Sit back and relax again. My friend texted me saying, oh girl, I'm so sorry. Another stupid fucking change no one asked for. My likes were actually a free museum, so I'm stunned by this decision. Wait, this is evil. When did this happen? Removing likes is so evil, they've demolished something so romantic. The balcony of secrets, the alley of Triss. It's horrible and should be made optional. Now you have removed a key feature for how many of us used to find like-minded individuals on here. I normally like everything you guys do, but this is a mistake. Yeah, why is it not optional? I want to share what I like. I'm not a coward. Let me show the people what I like. Where is the setting to let my likes be public? I don't give a fuck. Oh Elon bitch, you done did it now. Likes are private now. Elon has ruined this app. 
Not being able to see who's in the likes of a tweet actually ruins 80% of the user experience for me. I got beef with you, Elon Musk. Can't stalk Twitter likes anymore. I have no reason to be on this app. Not being able to see who liked other people's tweets is devastating for people like me who steal their mutuals' mutuals. What happened to connection, to family, to community? Removing the likes page is deeply insane. Absurdly hostile to new and small users. The owners of this app cannot imagine how small accounts find each other. They fundamentally don't understand the experiences involved. It really does feel like siloing away serendipity and discovery. I was liking shit on purpose, what the fuck? We are losing important social signals. Monitoring likes is like 50% of the infrastructure for Stan Wars on here. Elon doesn't know what he just did. All right, this one is long, but it's too real, so I'm gonna pull out some bits and pieces. I love checking in the morning to see when she was waking up reading her phone. I love checking on Friday nights when she had a few drinks. I love checking around 1 p.m. on weekdays to imagine her scrolling the timeline on her lunch break. Sometimes I'd start a conversation with her based on one of the things I'd seen her like, or watch a movie that she faded a reference to so I could discuss it with her. It made me a richer and more developed person, and also closer to her. Sometimes I'd know not to say anything to her at all, if her likes indicated she was going through something. It did a lot for me, and I think it's unfair it's gone, but I have to accept that it's gone. The tide has risen, and I can't follow her digital footprints anymore. It's not dramatic. Mm -mm. Now that Twitter likes are private, I can't send subliminal messages to potential love interests anymore. Now I just have to tweet my feelings directly like a Neanderthal. Due diligence can no longer be completed. This is no longer a dating app. Removing likes from X is removing layers of connection between us and will contribute to the birth rate decline. That last one sounds wildly dramatic, but it is honestly not that crazy. And again, it's something that goes against something Elon is constantly talking about. Though there could be a debate that social media allows for too much context, which creates less relationships, both platonic and romantic, because people are able to point out too many potential negatives before even seeing what the in-person chemistry is like with a person. But to rebuttal that, one could argue that what's in someone's likes will eventually be revealed in other ways down the line, so having access to something like that from the start is just socially efficient. Now, there are people enjoying the change. There are people who agreed with Elon's tweet about getting attacked for their likes. Others are saying, now that likes are hidden, I am liking posts with complete abandon. If you spark even a flicker of joy, you get a like. I'm the fairy godmother of dopamine. Main difference for me is I'm slightly less anxious when I like something that's a bit rude or political. Sorry, liking tweets in private is so much fun. And look, if that's how you want to live, I'm happy for you. Simultaneously, I and many others would choose a different path. Now let's talk about other ways this decision has affected the platform more broadly. First is that people are being petty and replying liked on tweets and protest, which surprisingly is still going on, but bound to die out very soon because that's doing a lot. More broadly, users who actively post their main feeds, as well as recognize the value of the public likes tab, are retweeting more because a piece of what was provided for our online identities with the public likes tab is now missing. But like I said here, starting with a similar sentiment, now that likes aren't public, plus nicely compartmentalized on my profile to show another layer of what I'm into slash align with, I feel like I have to retweet to compensate and it makes my feed look like trash. Twitter feeds are already messy as is, and with one of its best abilities being curation, this is stupid. And these things aren't retweet material, but likes on Twitter specifically compared to other platforms really is an identity thing that I want public. Like this person I quote tweeted said, my Twitter likes are my whole identity. There are fundamental differences between what you choose to retweet versus what you choose to like, and just because when you retweet something, it goes on your main feed, it doesn't make it more important to someone or more representative of who they are. It's just a different layer that provides different context, and feeling the need to mix those two now on the main feed is again, messy. This is probably a good place to note that the average Twitter user does not post or retweet onto their main feed. They instead just observe and like content. And I don't think this change is going to push them to do otherwise, aka become more active on their main feed. I think what I just said before only really applies to already very active users. Some will mention that because of the shift, we should have a retweet tab on our profile. If we get one, it would basically be the likes tab. But I don't believe it would basically be like the likes tab because what you choose to retweet, retweet tab or not, would remain different than what you choose to like. I love the repost tab on TikTok, but it's still a differentiated mindset from my likes tab. Even the simple fact that to retweet, you do two taps instead of just one tap like you would do for a like, it gives the action more weight. But regardless, our relationship with the concept of repost slash retweets is pretty well established and again, just different. 
Another effect that many mentioned but must be elaborated on is the removal of the public likes tab takes away arguably the greatest and one of the only ways left to have control over your discovery experience without algorithmic intervention. Going through people you enjoy's following list was another way, but Elon fucked with that too and now you're only able to see 50 accounts. Someone proposed that maybe the function that says related post can replace the function that like served. And likewise, I assume that many ex-employees' stance is that the free feed will only get better. The free feed considers the likes of those you follow and all these different things. But again, it relies on an algorithm, and an algorithm that we cannot easily and very specifically tweak to our preferred experience at this point in time. Many mentioned how they have their go-to people whose likes they check out for great tweets. And even if an algorithm was trained solely based on what those people are liking across the platform and brought you really great posts that aligned with that, there would still be question marks as to what the actual human would validate. And even though algorithmic feeds can bring you great discovery, be wildly interesting, and are also something I don't want to give up, feeds curated by human minds that you respect, love, or whatever it may be, still top algorithmic decisions in many scenarios. Like, I love, love, love when people have a recommendations playlist for YouTube videos. I eat those up. And to this person's point, the decision to remove the public likes tab is totally counter to Jack's ideas and what Elon has said about open sourcing the algorithm. Let's watch a few minutes of the former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey interview he's referring to, which took place last month. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the importance of open sourcing algorithms or, or choice of algorithms? Yeah. I, this is going to sound a little bit crazy, but I think the, the free speech debate is a complete distraction right now. I think the real debate should be about, about free will. And we, we feel it right now because we are being programmed. We're being programmed based on what we say we're interested in. And we are told uh, through these discovery mechanisms what is interesting. And as we engage and interact with this content, the algorithm continues to build more and more of this bias. But the algorithm, even if it's open source, is effectively a black box. You cannot predict 100% uh, of the time how it's going to work, what it's going to show you. And it can be moved and changed at any time. And, be, and because people become so dependent upon it, it's actually changing and impacting the, the agency we have, the free agency we have. And I think the only answer to this is not to work harder at open source in algorithms or making them more explainable about what they're doing and why they're doing it, but to give people choice. Give people choice of what algorithm they want to use from a party that they trust give people choice to build their own algorithm that they can plug in on top of these networks and, um, and see, you know, see what they want and they can shift them out as well. Um, and give people choice to have really a marketplace around an algorithm that you can choose. I want to use this for these reasons. I don't trust that party anymore, so I'm not going to use this or I'm not going to use anything at all. I want to, I want to be the discovery mechanism. And that's, that's really the, the biggest problem and why these corporations became so large and so valuable is because they solved the discovery problem on the internet. We talk a lot about the public square, but the public square cannot be owned by one company. The public square by default is the internet. But the problem with the public square is it's very hard to discover and to be, bat to be matched with the things that you're truly interested in. And that's where the value of a Google came in, it helps you discover. That's where the value of a Facebook, it helps you discover your friends. The value of a Twitter helps you discover news and interesting content of the day. But if we can solve the discovery problem in an open source way, in a free agency way, that you get to choose uh, how you see the world and what algorithms you're using and you know more or less how they're, how they're working and that you can turn them off and see everything. That's really powerful, and that's what we need. And we just haven't a lot of we haven't seen a lot of of motion there. I, I, Twitter took the first step um, some time ago when we enabled you to turn off the algorithm and just see who you're following. But the problem with that is you miss tons and tons of content um, because there's just millions and billions of tweets going by, and you need some help. But to be able to trust the help, I think you need to be able to choose it and have agency over that. Otherwise, it really is attacking free will. It's, it's programming how we think. And we can resist it all we want, but uh, it knows us better than we know us because we tell it our preferences 
implicitly and explicitly all the time. And I, it just feels super dangerous to continue to rely upon that without choice. I agree with everything said there, and I think the public likes tab on profiles provided a significant degree of agency over our experience on the platform. Though it's important to note that what people like is still often a domino effect sparked from the almighty discovery mechanism on the platform, and right now that is the For You feed. So technically you're often not fully removed from the algorithm when you're in People's Likes tab, but still. Coverage I'll get to another week that sparked for me as soon as they introduced that feed in 2023 is that for you feeds should not be our holy grail. I'm still parsing through my thoughts, but I don't know if that should be the default feed on Twitter or otherwise. I think it's a feed that you should have the option to tap into when you want that mindset shift and you should have to like physically signal that. But I think a healthy default feed tends to be what Twitter had right before Elon came in. Right now on Twitter, you have two feed options. You have the for you feed and the following feed. And the following feed is as watered down as it gets. It's chronological and solely based on the tweets and retweets of the people you follow. And to Jack's point, if you only consume that type of feed, you miss out on so much potential of the platform, though I think it should always be an accessible option. But the default feed before seemed to be entirely based on the tweets, retweets, and likes of the people you follow, and the algorithm would rank those tweets based on how much you engaged with those people you follow. Pretty sure the algorithm wasn't open sourced, so I'm not fully aware of its inner workings, but of course there was the algorithmic incentive where people get more or less attention from you than they maybe would have organically because they're continuously promoted or demoted in your feed. But still, I think it was a healthy middle ground between the current following and for you feed. The current for you feed algorithm definitely has more outside sources coming in and takes you out of that well curated cocoon you try to make for yourself. So yeah, choice when it comes to features, algorithms, and other things we experience on social media is wildly important. And I hope leaders of these platforms recognize that and allow for way more of it over the next decade. Now, what is the fate of the public legs tab on Twitter profiles? Two days after its removal, one of the ex-engineers tweeted a poll, bring back the option and settings to make legs public. Over 70% of the more than 6,000 people who voted, voted yes. To which I responded, if when giving people the choice, I hope it's easily accessible via pop-up, similar to how you guys announced the decision to private them. Otherwise, plus for new users, I recommend default public for those who had them public 48 hours ago, and the option to private them instead of the other way around. I don't think you guys grasped how unique public likes were for x slash Twitter's culture. There are social media stats that show how more than 90% of users don't change their default settings, so default private would be an L. But now it's been weeks since everyone's likes went private, and with that mindset shift, it would be very messed up privacy-wise if they made people's likes tab public all of a sudden. So aside from new users, unfortunately, the window to be default public again has likely closed, which is insane. And if they wait too long to make a decision about giving people the choice to make theirs public, it then becomes work for users to go through and temp check all the days, weeks, or even months that they were private. And for that reason, even those who wanted them to be public and voice that after the change might just keep them private. I'm ready for that day and we'll make them public again right away, but that is something to consider. Which again, sucks because so much of the benefit is, again, other people having their legs public, not necessarily yourself. However, we should always be mindful of the trail we leave online because nothing is ever truly private. A feature called Twitter Circles, similar to Instagram Close Friends, launched in 2022 and shut down in late 2023. But before that, there was a glitch that made people's circle tweets public for a day or two. That possibility is always there for online offerings. It's likely that with the demand for the public likes tab, how to charge for the feature under their premium subscription has crossed ex-employees' minds. But as I stated here, do not make it a paid feature. The point is users want other people's to be public and paying does not guarantee that. So I hope that if they introduce the option, it's not with some lame caveat like that. Though a feature they could potentially add for users who want the majority of their likes public but have some discrepancies is the ability to make specific likes private. On one hand, this would be good for those who might get some backlash for opinions contrarian to broader culture or those within their personal life, but still want the engagement recognized by the algorithm. On the other hand, it potentially feels a bit too deceiving and like desperate. It's doing a lot just to get a little like in there. I don't know, it's something I could actually see as a premium feature, all or nothing, free to all users, more complex, you have to pay. All right, to end things, Twitter has an entirely different energy without the public likes tab on people's profiles. I feel like I don't truly know anyone anymore. And 
I'm not joking. It's unfortunately feeling way less telepathic. And look, I try to be nice about Elon leading Twitter alongside critiques. In an old video, I even said that I could understand why he likes the X branding. It's clean, it's simple. Stupid. I'm embarrassed that's on the internet. But it's no more Mr. Nice Guy because again, he fucked with one of my most beloved features on the platform. And I hope not, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's more to come. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope this brought value to you. I appreciate you so much and I'll see you next time.